Hello, young soul. Welcome to the Daily Channel of Terror. If you are afraid of real and scary reports, this channel is not for you. I suggest you get out of this video. But if you are not afraid to listen to these horror stories, I suggest you subscribe to the channel so as not to miss the next stories. Don't forget to leave your likes and comments help the channel a lot. Once upon a time, there was a village surrounded by such a dense forest that even at noon, the treetops filtered out the sunlight, creating a permanent twilight under its branches. The villagers say that the forest is alive, whispering ancient secrets to those who dare to listen. Legend has it that as night fell, whispers became voices calling the careless to their dark depths. My name is John. and I never believed those stories until that night. I grew up in this village, a child playing on the edge of the forest, always warned not to venture beyond the known boundaries. As the only child of a single mother, I learned from an early age to take care of myself while she worked late. The forest has always been a constant presence in my life, a sleeping giant that I and my reckless youth decided to challenge that night. A challenge was proposed by my friend, and I spent the night in the woods, armed with a flashlight, and bravely fueled by laughter and gossip, I went deep into the dark heart. The atmosphere changed as the daylight receded. The usual twilight, the crickets, the wind, was replaced by an oppressive silence. It was as if the forest was holding its breath for something. Or someone, I wasn't alone. My best friend Lucia insisted on coming. She has always been fearless, the kind of person who faces her fears head on. Together, we found a place to camp, a clearing where the full moonlight faintly illuminated the leafy ground. Do you hear me, Lucia? He broke the silence in a tense voice. It was then that we first heard a whisper that was almost inaudible like the wind, whispering, it must be just the wind. I tried to convince myself. More to calm my own fast-paced heart than to calm it. But the whispers increased, growing in intensity and number, as if several people were speaking at the same time, but without being able to understand the words. Lucia took my arm, her eyes wide open, reflecting the light of the moon. John, this is not normal. There's something wrong here. I mean, she was exaggerating that it was just our imagination fed by the stories we grew up listening to. But then something moved between the trees and a fast, sneaky shadow passed by the moonlight. My heart is beating. It's not human. It's not animal. It's something else. It's something that doesn't belong in this world. Whispers became clear words calling our names. John Lucia was as if the forest knew us, as if it had been watching us, waiting. Let's get out of here, said Lucia, pulling me back to the trail. We ran in fear, giving wings to the nose of our feet, but the forest seemed to close around us. Trees bend down to create a dark maze. The way back was lost for us, transformed by some dark trick of the night. Now, as I write, with the light of my flashlight in my trembling hands, I hear the whispers approaching. Lucia is beside me, gasping for breath. Every shade that passes through the trees is a threat. We don't know what the night holds for us, but one thing is certain. The forest has life, and its secrets are as old as they are dangerous. And in the silence between the whispers, I finally understand that some stories are true, and some realities are more terrible than stories can ever tell. Darkness squeezed around us as we ran through each shadow. And every whisper that increases our terror. I could feel Lucia's fear as if it were mine. An electric current that connected us as we struggled to find our way back. But the forest wouldn't let us go. 
I think we're walking in circles, said Lucia, her voice trembling. John, look. She pointed to a big oak tree that she swore we had passed before. The recognition of that desperate milestone brought a knot to my stomach. It can't be. I muttered to myself, trying to keep calm, but my heart beat like a drum in my chest. Shall we try another direction? We changed course, hoping to fool the forest and its tricks. But with each step we took, the whispers grew more insistent, more audible, fragmented words that spoke of forgotten secrets and broken old covenants. Lucia and I tightened together as if we could protect each other from the invisible. Suddenly a tall, gloomy figure appeared. Our front was more of a silhouette than a substance. As if the night itself had been shaped into human form, we stopped abruptly, our bodies frozen with fear. What do you want from us? I shouted, my voice sweating, strangely sharp in the silence that followed. The figure did not answer, but the whispers around us calmed down as if they were waiting for their quay. Then, in a voice that seemed to be made of dry leaves and wind, she spoke. You have entered the Forgotten Realms. Where the living rarely step, you must pay the price. We don't want trouble, said Lucia, her voice firm. In spite of our obvious fear, we just want to go home. The figure seemed to consider his words with his head down in an almost curious way. Go home. You want to go back, but everything has its price. In the woods, do we have to do something? I asked, hoping against all hope that there would be a way out. A way to negotiate with the spirit or whatever it is. An exchange, the figure whispered, and the whispers around echoed an exchange, an exchange. A secret kept in exchange for the way back. Lucia and I exchanged a quick look at what secrets we could offer, and then a family secret came to mind, something my mother had entrusted me with the promise of never revealing. Would that be enough? With a heavy heart, I decided to take the risk of revealing the secret, the gloomy figure. Every word cost me more than the last one. The figure listened quietly, and when I finished, she simply nodded. The path will be revealed, she said, and then it faded like smoke in the wind. The whispers stopped, and for the first time that night, the silence was like bomb. We now move forward with a new determination, and miraculously, the familiar trail began to appear under our feet. The village has never looked so warm as the moment we emerged from the woods, the dawn dyed the sky pink and orange. But as we walked to safety, I couldn't help but wonder about the price I had paid. What would the forest do with that secret? And that other story she kept whispering in the shadows, waiting for the next reckless ones to challenge her tortuous paths. As the dawn slowly spread over the village, Lucia and I walked quietly with the promise of a new day. The relief of escaping from the forest was palpable, but there was a weight in our hearts, a remnant of fear, and the perception that something had irrevocably changed within us. By the time I got home, my mother was already standing, with a look of concern on her face that turned into relief when she saw me. John, where have you been? I was so worried. His voice trembled a little, the fear of a mother who fears her child. I tried to smile, trying to calm her down. It's all right, Mom. I just spent the night out. The hesitation in my voice was evident, and I saw the suspicion glow in his eyes. In the woods. She asked, her tone charged with a mixture of fear and reproach. She knew more about the forest than she had ever shared with me. Yes. I confirmed, lowering my head. Lucia and I chose not to mention the secret that was revealed. The price we paid for our safety. Some truths were too heavy to share, even with those we loved. My mother, she sighed, running a hand through her hair, as if trying to sort out her thoughts. John, this forest she guards more than just trees and shade. You have to promise that you won't venture there again, especially at night. I promised to calm her down more than any conviction of my own. But inside, 
I knew that something in me had been drawn to those dark mysteries. A curiosity that burned stronger than any promise of security could be extinguished. In the days that followed, Lucia and I shared meaningful gazes at school, a silent connection forged on that night of terror. We talked little about what we had experienced, as if putting words in some way could make everything more real, more scary. However, the memory of the murmur of the dark figure and the secret revealed remains vivid in our minds. One afternoon, as he was walking in the village square, he saw a group of tourists with cameras hanging around their necks with an air of fascination. As they looked around, they talked excitedly about the beauty of the village and the mysterious forest that surrounded it. Part of me wanted to warn them, tell him about the dangers hidden in the shade of the trees, but the other party hesitates. Would the forest choose them as it had chosen us? And what would that mean? At night, in my room, the open window lets in the cool night breeze, accompanied by an almost imperceptible whisper. My heart beat faster at the recognition of the sound. John's voice was so light that it could be confused with the wind. I approached the window and looked at the forest stretching out under the moonlight. The whispers continued, a promise or a threat, an invitation to reveal more of your secrets. And as I stood there listening, I knew that the story of the forest was far from over. There were more mysteries whispering my name, hoping that curiosity would lead me back to the darkness again. The night breeze seemed to whisper promises as I leaned against the window, gazing at the dark vastness of the forest. The temptation to explore its mysteries again was strong, almost irresistible. But my mother's words echoed in my mind a gloomy reminder of the consequences of disobeying that warning. I walked away from the window, trying to ignore the call that seemed to come from the depths of the trees. He knew that the forest kept secrets that should not be disturbed, truths that could consume as much as illuminate. I went to my mother's small office where she kept old books and maps of the area. Maybe there I could find some explanation or some story that would give me clarity. Looking through an old compendium of local legends, I found a passage about the forest. The Whispering Forest, as it was named by the ancients, is said to be a place where the veil between the worlds is thin. Those who walk on their coops at night can find more than shadows. They can find glimpses of other realities or be touched by them. Reading made me shudder at every word, adding to the feeling that there was more at stake than I could comprehend. I decided I couldn't face that secret alone. Lucia, with her unwavering courage, would be my companion in this search for answers. The next day I met her at school and shared my findings. We have to be careful, she said softly listening to her serious, thoughtful John face. We don't know what's really there, but if we're gonna find out, we're gonna do it together. That night, under the cloak of stars that only the complete darkness of the countryside can offer, we returned to the forest, but this time we were prepared, not only with lanterns and supplies, but with a renewed respect for the power and mystery of the place. We walked quietly, watching every whisper or movement, but surprisingly. The forest was quiet, as if it were watching us, pondering our intentions. We came to the clearing where it all had begun, and there we decided to wait. Time passed slowly, and every minute was prolonged by attention and expectation. But then something changed. The air grew heavier, and a clear whisper came towards us. You have sought to understand, and that will be granted. Before us, the shadow reappeared. But this time, not as a threat, but as a guardian. The forest keeps ancient secrets. The figure said his voice warmer than before. But for those who respect their ways, it offers knowledge. A soft light began to shine around the figure, revealing not a dark entity, but an elder, a protector of the forest and his story. He talked about ancient times, 
about forgotten civilizations that lived and died under the treetops and how the forest preserved the memory of all this. When the sun began to rise, the old man disappeared like a part of the morning mist, leaving us alone again, but with a sense of peace. Lucia and I looked at each other knowing we had received a great gift. We walked back to the village not only as survivors, but as guardians of some of the secrets the forest entrusted us, and as life continued with its daily joys and challenges. The forest of whispers remained by our side, an eternal reminder that sometimes the darkest places hide the brightest truths. And so our story was concluded, but the echo of their mysteries whispered forever in our hearts, ready to be rediscovered when the world was ready to listen again. In a city forged between legends and fog, the solar building stands like a monolith forgotten by time, its stories intertwined in the shadows of its long corridors. With its windows peeking into city life and a past whispering around the corners, the building seems to hold more secrets than its residents dare to discover, among them Valeria. A young woman determined to uncover the mysteries that the top floor seemed to hide, unaware that her quest would lead her through a veil far more dark and personal than she could have imagined. I've always been fascinated by the unknown. Perhaps that's why I moved to the Solar Building, a place my grandfather described with a mixture of respect and awe in his childhood stories. He used to say that buildings have their own souls and don't like to be disturbed. From the first day I was in my new apartment on the ninth floor, I knew there was something unusual about the top floor, the twelfth floor. No one lived there, and the few who ventured up did not wait to come down, with frightened looks and little desire to talk about the experience. Curiosity has always been my weakness or my strength, depending on how you see it. In my first month at Solares, I spent hours investigating every floor. Talking to the neighbors about the history of the building, until the clues inevitably led me to the top floor. I had to see for myself what was hidden behind those doors that seemed to seal more than just empty apartments. That night, a typical summer storm began to form in the sky with lightning dancing in the distance, promising a spectacle of thunder and wind. It was the perfect setting for my foray into the unknown. I went up the stairs because the elevator was conveniently under maintenance. With each step, the air seemed to get heavier, and the whispers of the wind on the stairs sounded almost like distorted voices. When I got to the 12th floor, the front door was half open, as in inviting or challenging. Whoever had the courage to come in, I pushed her gently, and the hinge clanged back down the empty hallway. The lights flashed intermittently, casting shadows that danced on the walls like ghosts or beetles, Every step of my life echoed a sound that sounded both a warning and an announcement of my presence. The hallway was colder than the rest of the building, and a damp, musty smell permeated the air. I started exploring the apartments. They were all empty, some with furniture marks on the dust piled up on the floor, others completely clean, like no one ever stepped there. In one of them, I found a mural of old photographs with faces I swore I would have seen in the hallways or windows of the building. Then I heard the first sound, a clear, soft scratch, as if someone were drawing a symbol on one of the doors at the end of the corridor, and my heart was so cold that I was sure anything on the floor could hear it. Rationality told me to run, but my thirst for answers kept me there, rooted in the cold ground. The scratches stopped, and in the silence that followed, a sudden chill passed me like a warning. I continued my exploration, although every shadow now seemed to hide a threat. In one of the apartments farthest from the hallway, 
I found a diary covered in a thin layer of dust. The cover was worn out, the pages were yellow, but the letters were still legible. It was from a woman who lived there in the 50s and talked about how the sounds and visions on the floor kept her awake. During the nights, she would write about voices whispering her name. I followed Las during the day about how the shadows looked and how she felt something or someone was always watching. As I turned every page of the diary, a strong sense of connection grew inside me, as if the words I had written decades ago echoed my own fears and curiosity. Each entry describes details that only those who have experienced the ordeal of the twelfth floor can know. As I read, a feeling of being watched became more and more palpable, as if invisible eyes were running through every inch of my skin. I decided to leave the diary where he could find it, but when I got up, there was a dragging sound of footsteps coming from the corridor and my heart beat uncomfortably. I slowly approached the door, peering through the void. The hallway was empty. The light still flickered in a rhythm that now appeared almost like a code, a warning in the air. The smell of something burning began to infiltrate subtly, but it became stronger and stronger. I resumed my exploration, driven by a mixture of fear and fascination. The footsteps seemed to follow my pace, always at a constant distance, never completely close, but never far away from every apartment I inspected. The atmosphere became more oppressive, and the feeling that something terrible was about to happen intensified. As I entered the last apartment in the corridor, a sudden cold enveloped me completely. This space, unlike the others, had furniture, a room with an old sofa that had been undone, a center table covered with layers of dust and books with moldy pages on the walls, frames turned down. As if someone had tried to ignore the images they contained, as I approached one of the paintings to come, I hesitated, feeling a cold warning hand on my shoulder, even though there was no one visible nearby. I turned the painting to reveal a portrait of a woman. His eyes were so vivid that they seemed to follow me the moment our eyes met. A sharp sound broke the silence of the night, the sound of something metal crawling across the wooden floor of the corridor. My heart stopped. And for a moment, all I could hear was that rising sound and my gasping breath. The noise stopped abruptly, as if anyone or what I was producing knew I was listening in that suffocating silence. The smell of burning intensified, and small ashes began to fall from the ceiling, as if an invisible bonfire was burning above me. The temperature dropped further, and my own breath formed clouds of steam in the cold air of the apartment. I decided I had to go out, but when I turned to the door, there was a woman standing in the doorway, dressed in old clothes. Her pale face, illuminated only by the flickering light of the corridor, your dark, deep eyes were fixed on mine, and a whisper escaped from your lips. You shouldn't be here. Before I could answer, she was gone like smoke, leaving only the echo of her warning. I ran down the hallway, my footsteps dragging, and now I was sweating behind me, faster, more urgent. The lights flashed wildly as if they were trying to guide me or confuse me as I reached the stairs. I didn't look back, I went down every step in a desperate hurry, and the sound of my own footsteps was suffocating. When the people who followed me arrived at my apartment, I hastily locked the door and leaned against it as I tried to catch my breath. The silence that followed was disturbing, a calm before a storm that I knew instinctively had not passed that night. I could barely sleep, and every sound, every whisper that seemed to come from the walls of the solar panels, stood out. For the next few days I avoided the twelfth floor, but the feeling of being watched never left me. I knew something was still waiting for me in the shadows of that building. Something that had not forgotten my intrusion, and I, driven by the same curiosity that had brought me there, knew that sooner or later I would have to face the mysteries of the top floor of the building again. Solar. 
The days that followed were marked by growing unease. My dreams were haunted by empty corridors and indistinct whispers that seemed to call my name, dragging me back to the top floor. During the day, I tried to concentrate on my daily activities, but the image of the woman on the doorstep and the sound of something crawling across the wooden floor echoed in my mind, disturbing my walk. I knew that something deeper and more disturbing than just ancient stories inhabited the solar building. Every look of my neighbors carries a weight, a hesitation, as if they also know the secrets of the top floor. But they would rather be silent, the madness that the truth could bring. But my encounter with the woman and the voices that haunted me did not make me forget, did not allow me to simply move on. After a few sleepless nights, I decided that the only way to find some peace was to face the mystery. Again, I needed answers. I needed to understand who that woman was and why the twelfth floor. It was like a prison for lost souls. My plan was simple, to climb during the day, when the sun could give me a sense of security, even knowing that the shadow of fear did not respect the light. On the chosen afternoon, the sky was surprisingly clear, a break from the summer storms they used to paint. The gray sky climbed the stairs with firm steps, each step echoing my challenge, and the shadow I knew was waiting for me. The door to the top floor was closed, and this time his cold surface was under my fingers, as if he were trying to repel me. I opened the door with a restrained breath and walked in. The corridor was bathed in a dim light that filtered through the dirty windows, which somehow only served to accentuate the shadows. The silence was almost tangible, only interrupted by the sound of my own footsteps. I went straight to the apartment where I found the diary and the picture. The place was as I had left, covered with dust and abandonment. I approached the woman's painting, now facing the wall again, hesitating before touching it, remembering the look that seemed to penetrate my soul. With a sigh, I turned the picture around again. His eyes, still so vivid, seemed to look straight at me, a mixture of pleading and warning reflected in his painted expression. Who are you? I muttered, almost without waiting for an answer. As if in response to my question, the air around me began to cool down, a sign I was already very familiar with. The light began to flash twelve times, and then a voice whispered so close that I felt a cold breath in my ear. Release us. The shock of the voice so clear and so close made my heart beat faster. I turned quickly, but there was no one behind me. I was alone, at least in what I could see. My mind struggled to understand. To accept that that voice could have been real, I wanted to run. I wanted to run away from it. But something kept me in place. A need to understand. To help. How can I release you? I asked in the void, my voice trembling. There was no immediate response, only the sound of something gently dragging down the corridor. Outside, I knew I wasn't alone, that the souls of that place were watching me, perhaps judging my true intentions. I walked slowly down the hall, following the sound. Every step seemed to weigh tons, and every shadow seemed to move when I reached the end of the corridor. I stopped at the last door, where the sound seemed to come from. I took a deep breath, preparing to face whatever was there, to face the heart of the mystery of the sun building, and I put my hand on the cold handle of the last door, hesitating for a moment that seemed to extend for eternity. I felt the weight of every untold story, every secret hidden in the shadows of that building. With a sigh that carried all my resolve and fear, I turned the handle and opened the door. What I found was a room that looked like a shrine of the past, full of dusty objects, old furniture, and frames facing the walls, as if trying to hide their true colors. But what attracted the most attention was a large oval mirror in the center of the room, its reflection blurred by the dust of the years. It was for him that all the objects seemed to point out as if they were the core of all the energy and mystery that enveloped the twelfth floor. I approached the mirror 
and noticed how the air around me seemed to vibrate with a palpable energy. I put my hand on the cold glass and wiped the dust with an almost irreverent gesture. The reflection that appears is not my own, but a series of images that quickly alternate. Faces, scenes from other times, moments of joy and terror. I then understood that the mirror was not just an object, but a portal. A living memory of all the souls who had passed that floor and were trapped, each one captured at the moment of their greatest fear or sadness, repeating their destinies indefinitely. Release us, the voice whispered again, this time with an urgency that made me tremble. I looked around, looking for some way to help, to fulfill the voice's request. My eyes fell on an old wooden box by the mirror. Covered with symbols that seemed ancient and mystical, I found candles and a small leather book with instructions for a ritual. With trembling hands, I followed the guide, placed the candles around the mirror, and lit each one by muttering the old words I hoped would be the key to the freedom of those souls. The candlelight reflected in the mirror, and the images began to rotate faster. A whirlpool of lives and emotions that merged into a dance of light and shadow. Then, as suddenly as it began, everything stopped. The mirror lit up, and for a moment I saw in the reflection all the faces that had spoken to me, each expressing gratitude before disappearing, leaving only my own reflection looking back at me. A deep silence fell on the place, and I felt a peace I had not realized for a long time. The air was lighter, the shadows less threatening. I left the apartment and closed the door gently behind me, knowing I had done my best that the souls on the 12th floor were finally at peace. I walked down the stairs of the solar building for the last time, feeling a soft melancholy for leaving behind not only a chapter of my life, but also a part of me that had been irrevocably changed by the experience. I looked back and saw the building in the golden light of the setting sun. It was no longer a place of shadows and fears, but a structure that, like all of us, had stories to tell, some of terror, some of redemption. And so, with the mystery of the top floor solved, I knew that new adventures were waiting for me wherever they went, but they will always keep a silent memory of those days of shadows and the night when lost souls found their way back to the light. In the shadows of the past, in the whispers of the night wind, lay a forgotten city, far away from the curious eyes of the world. It hides in the twists and turns of time, shrouded in the dark mystery that echoes through the ages. Few dare to venture through its abandoned streets, fearing to awaken the secrets buried on its stone foundations. And it was in this lost city that my dark journey began. I'm Miguel a solitary traveler in search of answers to unanswered questions. My journey led me to the edge of a deserted road, where a rusty sign showed the way to a city that the world had forgotten. Curious and driven by an inexplicable sense of destiny, I decided to explore the hidden mysteries of that forgotten city. As I entered the dark limits of the city, a feeling of uneasiness enveloped my being. As if the stone walls themselves whispered ancient secrets in my ears, empty streets stretched out before me, flanked by dilapidated buildings and dancing shadows that seemed to move on their own. Night fell slowly, casting a veil of darkness over the sleeping city. A shiver ran down my spine when I realized I wasn't alone. A sinister shadow writhed in the dark alleys watching me with oil, lifeless, that shone in the darkness. As I explored the dark corners of the city, a sense of impending danger seized me. Every step is a dangerous dance with the unknown, a struggle to uncover the secrets buried beneath the silent surface of the city. 
the abandoned buildings whispered the stories of lost lives and forgotten tragedies while I walked through the deserted streets. I felt myself being watched by invisible eyes that were probing me with a cold intensity. But it was when I entered the central square of the city that the true nature of its horror was revealed. An ancient monument erected to commemorate a mysterious figure of the past emits an ominous aura that seems to suck the light around it. In the pale moonlight, he saw a figure rising from the shadows, his face hidden by the shadows of the night. A shiver ran down my spine as I realized I was in front of the intruder who had awakened the sleeping horrors of the city. With a silent gesture, the figure pointed the way to the interior of the monument, as if challenging me to uncover the dark secrets that lived there. My curiosity overcame my fear as I entered the monument, diving into the dark depths of its interior. A steep staircase stretched out in front of me, leading me to the unknown depths below. Each step was a deeper descent into the dark abyss of the city, where ancient secrets were waiting to be discovered. As I descended deeper and deeper into the city, a sense of oppression came into being, as if the walls themselves were closing on me. The darkness became palpable, and I was wrapped in his arms, cold and ruthless. I finally came to an underground chamber, where an ancient altar rests in the center of a room lit by ancient torches, Strange symbols adorn the walls, ancient inscriptions carved in stone that seem to be pulsating with an ancient and sinister energy. It was then that the dark figure came out, emerging from the shadows like a vengeful specter of the past. His eyes gleamed with a supernatural light fixed on me, with a penetrating intensity that seemed to probe the depths of my soul. In a whisper, the figure told me the story of the forgotten city, how she had been cursed by an ancient crime that had stained her soul forever. Since then, the shadows of the city have been inhabited by tortured spirits, seeking revenge for past sins. By listening to the intruder, I understood the true nature of my journey and the price I would pay to uncover the dark secrets of the forgotten city. My curiosity had awakened the sleeping horror and now I was caught in a battle between light and darkness that would define my destiny forever. And so, under the light of the ancient torch, I prepared myself to face the horrors that awaited me in the shadows of the forgotten city, knowing that my journey had just begun and that the real horrors were yet to come. The gloomy figure reached out to the ancient altar, summoning an ancestral energy that echoed through the city's underground chambers. Forgetting every word whispered in an old unknown language, the room trembled with a supernatural force that seemed to distort the reality itself around us. As I watched the ominous spectacle before me, I realized that I was involved in an ancient power game beyond my comprehension. But my curiosity overcame my fear and drove me to move on, even in the face of imminent danger. The gloomy figure turned to me, his eyes shining with a supernatural intensity that made me shudder to my soul. With a silent gesture, he pointed out the way to the depths of the catacombs in the city, where the darkest secrets were buried without hesitation. He followed the footsteps of the invaders through the dark, winding passages that stretched over the forgotten city. Each step was a deeper journey into the dark heart of the city, where the true evil resides in patient waiting. As we advanced through the dark insides of the city, I felt a sinister presence watching us from the shadows. A cold sense of terror took over me when I realized we weren't alone in those abandoned hallways. The murmur of lost souls echoed through the narrow passages. Whispering stories of pain and suffering that have been forgotten by the outside world, each sound is a gloomy reminder of the fate that awaits those who dare to challenge the horrors of the forgotten city. At last we came to a hidden chamber, where an ancient presence waited patiently in the shadows. A primitive sense of terror took over me when I realized the true nature of the evil that inhabited that sacred place.
The gloomy figure knelt down before the ancient altar, his eyes shining with a supernatural light that seemed to penetrate the heart of my soul. In a whisper, he began to recite an ancient call, awakening the sleeping horror that had been waiting in the depths of the abyss. As I watched helplessly as the supernatural powers unfolded before me, I realized that my journey had come to a dark crossroads. I was about to face the real evil that had taken root, its presence in the heart of the forgotten city, and the outcome of the ensuing battle that would determine my fate forever. With my heart beating uncontrollably in my chest, I prepared myself to face the horrors waiting in the shadows, knowing that my journey was far from over and that the real horrors were yet to come with a solemn gesture. The gloomy figure raised an ancient artifact and its pulsating light seemed to feed the darkness around us. A feeling of oppression weighed on me. As I watched helplessly as the events unfolded before my eyes, the air around us seemed to vibrate with sinister energy as if the world itself were reacting to the dark ritual unfolding before us, every beat of my heart. It was an echo of fear that spread within me as I prepared to face the evil that awaited me in the shadows. Suddenly, the walls of the chamber began to shake as if the world itself were giving way to the supernatural powers emanating from the ancient altar. A shiver ran through my spine as I realized we weren't the only ones attracted by the darkness that now unfolded before us. The sinister shadows writhed on the walls, taking shape and life as they moved towards us. A sense of despair took over me when I realized that we were surrounded by a horde of creatures that did not belong in this world. With a cry of defiance, the gloomy figure lifted the ancient artifact, triggering a burst of energy that tore the veil between the worlds and released the horrors that lurked in the depths of the abyss. The air around us was filled with the shouts of lost souls echoing through the underground chambers of the Forgotten City. Amid the chaos unfolding around us, I struggled to maintain my sanity while facing the horrors that rose from the shadows. Every blow is a dangerous dance with death, a desperate struggle for survival. In the midst of the nightmare unfolding in front of me as I fought for my life, a whisper echoed in my mind, promising power beyond my imagination in exchange for my soul. A dark dilemma arose before me when I realized that the only way to defeat the evil now spreading in the Forgotten City was to embrace the darkness that dwelt within me. With a heavy heart, I made the choice that would change the course of my destiny forever, surrendering myself to the dark forces that now threatened to engulf everything around me. In the beating light of the ancient torch, I became the catalyst for the destruction unfolding before us. Sacrificing my soul to save the city from the darkness that consumes it. And so, while the world around me was crumbling in flames and ruins, I knew that my journey was not yet over. For wherever darkness reigns, there will always be a lone warrior ready to face the evil that lurks in the shadows of the night. Shrouded in the darkness of my own creation, I plunged into the depths of the abyss, carrying the weight of my choice and the burden of my salvation. As the flames consumed the Forgotten City, a sense of tranquility seized me, knowing that my journey would come to an end. In the distance, I heard the distant cries of the lost souls, who were now wandering aimlessly through the ruins of the city, their voices echoing through the shadows like the horrors I had witnessed. But inside me, a glimmer of hope shines, reminding me that even in the depths of darkness, there is always a chance for redemption, and so, while the ashes of the Forgotten City were carried away by the night wind, I rose from the ruins like a phoenix, reborn from the flames, ready to face a new dawn and a new destiny. For, although the scars of my journey may never disappear completely, I know they have made me stronger, wiser, and more determined than I could have imagined. And so, with the last look back, I left the shadows of the past and moved on, knowing that wherever my path leads me, 
I will always be ready to face the horrors lurking in the shadows of the night, bravely, determined and unwavering in faith in the power of light to overcome darkness.